So just in case you don't know, I'm U.S. Army veteran Christopher Chaos, and I spent a little over 10 years in the United States Army, so why did I leave the Army? What's up, friends? Welcome to this Whatever Wednesday video, or whatever day it happens to be that you're watching this video on. For this video, I thought I would do a dedicated video to why I got out of the Army. I've kind of a little bit talked about it in certain other videos, maybe briefly, or even been asked quite often during like live streams and sort of addressed it a little bit here and there, but never really did a dedicated video to kind of talk about the specifics as to why I got out of the Army after especially doing like 10 years. So that's what this video is intended for. So let's talk about why I got out of the army. But before we can get into that, I gotta at least a little bit tell you about why I joined the army and what my goal was going into the United States Army. So young Christopher Chaos, obviously not my real name, but young Christopher, when I was in high school, I you know wanted to be an auto mechanic. I was going to uh, you know the auto classes and taking automotive in school, and I wanted to be an auto mechanic when I grew up or you know got out of high school or whatever. And my intention was to hopefully work my way up to working in a NASCAR garage. I thought it'd be really cool to be one of the individuals made like rebuilding engines, not one of the pit crew or anything like that, but like rebuilding the engines. So I was gonna possibly you know maybe try to go to some kind of college or something to be able to learn automotive better and then hopefully try to work my way up into that situation. Now, to be honest with you, I was not a very good mechanic, so it probably wouldn't have worked out that great anyways, but at that time, I really wasn't that great of a mechanic. It just sounded like it was something really cool to do. Now, my parents weren't gonna be able to afford to send me to any of these technical colleges that like I wanted to go to to be able to get really good education in automotive, so uh, I was kind of on the fence and thinking about maybe it'd just be best to go into the United States Army to learn automotive and then maybe get out of the Army and then try to work my way into you know maybe a college or something along those lines. Now, when I took the ASVAB, I didn't yet have this plan yet laid out. I knew I wanted to be an auto mechanic and that was my intention. I didn't really know if I was going to join the Army or what I was going to do, but I was like, you know what, I want to get out of class and I'm going to take the ASVAB because they had recruiters come to our school to offer people to take the ASVAB and I was like, sure, well, I'm going to go do this and get out of class. So when I took the ASVAB, I kind of goofed off a little bit with it. I you know, answered the questions that were easy to me, and if it was something that required a lot of thinking, I usually just guessed the answer and said screw it from there. The result of that didn't give me a very high ASVAB score. It got me a medium-ish, but nothing really that great really to get a lot of options for MOSs. So prior to getting out of high school, it came to me that I was going to join the Army, and so that was the plan, was to join the United States Army after high school. Christopher Mark Bandini. Chris will leave the Army in August and later will pursue his automotive career. Now I went through MEPS, went through the physicals and everything. Part of those physicals, they found that I had a partial cover blindness, which eliminated me from a lot of MOSs. Plus my ASVAB score also didn't, you know, exactly give me a lot of options. So I had very few options available to me with that color blindness and also my ASVAB score. One of the MOSs that were available to me was 88 Mike. They actually had a couple of other options available to me that I was not interested in. They started kind of digging a little bit more into some of the other ones I'd be able to do and eventually came up with 88 Mike, which is the motor transportation operator. And I just kind of was like, all right, I guess I could do this and maybe just do four years in the army and get out and go to college. So that was my original plan. My plan was to go into the army, originally I guess to be a mechanic. I didn't qualify to be a mechanic and I'm glad that I didn't because those individuals work very hard in the United States Army and I probably wouldn't have really had the patience to do what they do. But 88 Mike is what was offered to me. So I was like, okay, I'll come in the army, do four years and get out and then go to a trade school and maybe still do my automotive dream that I wanted to do. Shortly into the army, I was slowly kind of losing interest and in really wanting to be a mechanic anyways, but my idea or my goal was still the same. It was still to only really just do four years, get out, go to college and pursue something else. Because all I really wanted was the experience that the army could give me, that you know background of being an army veteran and all of the other knowledge that I could possibly get from being in the army and kind of use that as a stepping stone towards the rest of my career in the civilian world of having this military background and then going into the civilian side of things. Well, it started coming up to that last year of my contract where it was time to either re-enlist or just let it expire. Well, 
I was stationed in Korea. So what that meant for me was that I was not going to easily be able to line up jobs and places to live or anything without having to first go back to the United States and be able to do this stuff. It was gonna be very hard to do the legwork from another country to be able to line up some kind of job or some kind of career back in the States as well as going somewhere to live. I was most likely gonna to have to be in a situation where I was probably gonna to to move back to my really small hometown of Bishop, California, which I didn't wanna do and probably move back to my parents until I could get something going and then move out from there. And that's not what I wanted to do at all. So I ended up making the decision to go ahead and just re-enlist. Plus the Iraq war had just started. They were already gonna involuntarily extend me anyways. So it was like one of those things where, well, you can re-enlist and take a bonus and choose where you go from there. So I did that and I re-enlisted. So now it's putting me in another situation where I was getting close again towards my end of my contract because I only re-enlisted for an initial two years. So it was coming close fairly quickly and my unit was getting ready to deploy to Iraq. So this meant that uh, I was going to be getting out of the army pretty much around the time while I was still in Iraq, which wasn't going to be a feasible thing. They weren't gonna let you do that because at that time they still had this thing called stop loss. That made it to where you're pretty much just stuck in the army until the end of that deployment. And then within about you know six months or so after you come back from that deployment, then you could start transitioning. So you'd be involuntarily extended in the army. So my options were basically to go through that whole nut roll or re-enlist again and take a bonus because they offered me another bonus. So I did that. I did a short term re-enlistment again for another two years. And then it brought it to the very last time that I ended up re-enlisting yet again because of very similar circumstances. So this time my unit was moving to Fort Hood, Texas. I didn't have enough time left in the army to go with them to Texas. And I didn't have enough time to really stay in Fort Carson, Colorado. So I was most likely going to come up on orders to Korea, which would have put me back into that original situation. So I wanted to stay in Colorado. So I re-enlisted for another two years to be able to stay in Colorado. I ended up deploying yet again, but this time it wasn't the same kind of circumstances to where I was going to have enough time to go on this deployment, come back and then get out of the army. So I didn't have to worry about stop loss. Plus while I was on that deployment, they ended up getting rid of stop loss anyways. So finally, when I came back from my second deployment in Iraq, I finally had some things together. I finally knew what I wanted to do and what I wanted to kind of pursue and had a plan. I had a house already at this point in time. And so I had things better planned out than when I was in my initial situation. And it was okay for me to make my transition out of the army. Now, a lot of people might say, you know, why go and do 10 years and get out when you were halfway to retirement? The other thing you have to kind of note is that not a lot of people get to retire right at 20 years. So I really wasn't really halfway. I probably still had more than halfway to go. But the other thing to note is that, you know, I didn't ever intend for this to be a career thing. I intended it to be a stepping stone, the experience, the, uh, the whole lifestyle, the whole background of being military and having that, you know, status or having that experience to be able to apply to a civilian job and everything. That was my intent not to make it a career. So I didn't want to stay in for any longer than I had to. I already had been in longer than I really wanted to stay in. Now, I wouldn't say that I hated the army life, but I didn't love it either. So I was definitely ready for that transition to get out of the army and live my life a with a little bit more freedom because there are a lot of kind of constraints that you have being active duty army that really kind of weigh you down and constrain you from being able to do certain things. So I had had enough and I was ready to get out. Like I said, it wasn't intended to stay in for that long anyways. Plus the way the things were going was you were deploying every other year. You had a deployment, you'd be back for the United States for about a year and then go on another deployment and then back for a year and then another deployment. So I didn't want to live that lifestyle. Even like my unit, when I got out, they were in the process of getting ready to go to Afghanistan. So had I stayed in, I would have also additionally gone to Afghanistan, probably something else after that. And it would have gone on for quite a while because it wasn't until probably around maybe 2013, 2014, somewhere around there maybe, that things started to kind of slow down. Of course, at that time I didn't know that, but I still didn't want to stay in as a career soldier. It wasn't my interest to be able to do that. But I was finally in a good enough situation to where I could, you know, safely separate from the United States Army without putting myself in some kind of crazy predicament or anything like that. And after I got out, I ended up going to school to get an associate's degree. I got my associate's degree in television and radio and the GI Bill actually pays for four years of school. So I probably still have some GI Bill uh, education benefits left that I could utilize if I really wanted to. But during that process of while I was getting my associate's degree, I was able to score the job that I do currently working on Fort Carson teaching soldiers. 
When I first started working there, I was actually using a system called VPS3 to help soldiers do training, to react to IEDs, contact, convoy situations, all sorts of things. There's this big giant video game that's also very, very similar to Arma 3. It's actually modeled off of Arma 3 and used to be the same company. And then from there, after doing that for about five years, then I moved to more of an instructor type of position where I started teaching soldiers how to use a system called JCR or the new version of JVCP, which is basically this high speed, cool navigation system that soldiers use to track the other friendlies on the battlefield as well as send up reports for different things. So I like what I do now. I like teaching soldiers. I like being a civilian, I guess, and still having that you know military background and everything is still really nice and it especially is very key with my day job that I have now. Well, all right, if you enjoyed that video, go ahead and show us some love. Hit that thumbs up if you will, please. Also, maybe check out some videos over here. I got some great recommendations that you should probably check out. Links are down in the description for social media, Patreon, all that fun stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos and I'll see you next time. See ya.